When you go on the SEC website, uh, you'll see the uh, motto that the SEC is the investor's advocate. Uh, well, you represent investors <laughs> in the Ripple case, XRP token holders. What do you think? Uh, How is the SEC doing as, as an investor advocate? Well, I think the SEC has uh, lost focus of their motion, uh, their mission, I should say. Uh, they're, they're there to protect investors, and what they're doing is the opposite because I believe that the SEC and Gary Gensler are engaged in this jurisdictional land grab, if you will, of the cryptocurrency market, and these XRP holders are caught in the crosshairs of that you know, jurisdictional grab. Uh, not only have... Um, they fought us as amicus, and, and you guys, you know, you you know this amicus curi very well. We could be ignored. Instead, they have objected to our participation. They filed a motion to throw me off the case because I've tweeted a couple mean tweets about them and things of that nature. So I just think they've lost their complete focus on what they're there to do. Yeah, guys. So that was a little piece from John Deaton, obviously, talking about why, where, or whatever, the SEC just went completely astray. As we've already stated a thousand times, the SEC's main objective should be to protect U.S. investors. But time and time again, it looks as if they're trying to do the exact opposite in a very strange manner. Let me show you guys a couple cool pieces we came out today. We, that little brain fart. Let me show you guys a couple cool pieces, right? So, Stephen shared, find the difference. So, yeah, you are all. Too incompetent, too poor, <laughs> to build a project on the XP ledger yourselves, says the SEC. So take it a little bit of a look. Here's Joseph Lubin. In 2015, he established the centralized Ethereum development studio consensus to help build a commercial ecosystem around the platform. Given some context. Then, uh, within the SEC's um, document, Ripple has taken to grow the XP ecosystem and increase demand for XRP. Most, if not all. XRP investors simply lack the technical expertise and the resources to do so. As Ripple has done in a purported attempt to foster adoption of XRP, nor are XRP investors in any position to increase significantly demand or value for XRP by developing a use for the token through entrepreneurial efforts. This is something that I've actually missed earlier, I believe. It's also funny when you read these parts, like for example, XRP investors are betting that Ripple may yet solve Garlinghouse's trillion dollar problem, and they will profit as a result. If the SEC went out their way to state, hey, a lot of people are buying XRP, some of them don't know Ripple, which is true. Some of them do, and some of them expect Ripple to make some crazy use case for XRP. I think they'd state something true, because that's honestly what's happening. A lot of us are buying XRP for what Ripple is building partially and for what the rest can build because the XP ledger is pretty versatile and pretty damn good. But in the way that they're phrasing it, it's such a strange narrative. They're basically trying to say, hey, Ripple's use case, <laughs> moi, all right, with whatever they built for XRP, yeah, it's moi already. But anybody else, no, nah, they're, they're pretty garbage. Nobody can actually do anything else with XRP because... Well, they're dumb and poor. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what they wrote just there, right? It's kind of interesting to me how they how they like to write that out. Literally said, technical expertise and the resource to do so. This is like an, an insult to my face. Why? Now, if you ever felt insulted, you know, because of what the SEC has been doing, make sure you check out my giveaway doing $10,000, my biggest giveaway thus far. I sometimes look at this number and think, what is wrong with me? Why am I doing this? But then I realize how many happy faces I will see. And again, guys, remember, my entire crypto journey started with a giveaway. So for me, this is something I have to do. I was thinking about making it like, let's say $25 and split it over a ton of different people. But as you guys probably understand, the logistics of that would be kind of awful. So I decided to pick 10 different winners, but maybe soon, maybe next month, maybe the month afterwards, we're gonna split it over, let's say 500 people or something like that, or maybe 100 people and make a lot of people happy. As I said before, I wanna help at least a thousand people over the next 12 months. This is doing a, yeah, we're on a good way. A little bit of something else that's happening with the Ripple XRP, whatever. Seattle-based Web3 payment infrastructure provider Stably announced their stablecoin. Stably USD, USDS, will be issued on the XRP ledger. Quote, the 10-year-old blockchain best suited to enable settlement and liquidity of tokenized assets at scale. USDS will open up a fiat ramp connected directly to end users' bank accounts. 
It can onboard individually and businesses from 200 plus countries and enable Mint slash Redeem USDS on the XRP ledger. Using traditional payment methods such as bank transfers and credit slash debit cards, quote, Corey Hong, CEO of Stably, said, end quote, we are very excited to partner with Ripple and support our fiat to stablecoin gateway for the XP Ledger via USDS, end quote. Placard of partners on the website, Stably.io. We have Binance, Prime Trust, Digital, First Digital, Bittrex, Stellar, Wire, Kitsco, and Kyber Network. And yeah, a couple of little pieces, but that is nice. We also have a little bit more use. Ripple has joined the Web3 Design Lab founded by Btrex Japan as a strategic partner to promote the use of XRP. At Web3 Design Lab, we will provide service design utilizing XRP Ledger, the world's leading public blockchain that Ripple is involved in developing and support the business development of Japan companies as a design partner. Now, I should actually add one more thing to what I said earlier. A lot of you guys might not understand the sentiments behind why I was so, I felt so criticized by this. So one of the things which I am a really big fan of is stating that Ripple is another market participant, not the overarching enterprise. Obviously, you can have a debate about for a couple of hours about whether or not Ripple created XRP because obviously XRP were created, gifted to Ripple. The whole story is like uh, one that we can certainly debate about, about exactly what the underlying thought process was but it doesn't matter at the end of the day xrp is officially owned the xp ledger officially owned by nobody there's a couple of people who made it but it's a decentralized entity at the end of the day even though ripple has a lot of the xrp they can state whatever they want to state. even if ripple were the only party doing something would it make it centralized well it depends right i mean even if ripple were the only people building on top of the xp ledger that doesn't mean they have control over transactions. That doesn't mean they have control over where the XRP goes, so to speak, or what happens in terms of upgrades to the network. So then in terms of what is central, the amount of tokens, sure, we can, we can say that they have a majority of the tokens, but that does not necessarily give them more power. It gives them power to dump, certainly, but not over the network necessarily. And so that's the thing. Ripple likes to argue this, and I agree with them. They could do whatever they want. If they're the main player that's given adoption to this network, so be it. They're another market participant just like you and I. And at the end of the day, it's the same for almost any different crypto project out there. There's a foundation that's majorly pushing it all the time. And they're never criticized, even with Ethereum. Ethereum was mainly pushing it themselves for a very long time. And obviously, it's grown out from there. But so is, I personally think, the XP Ledger with a lot of endeavors on the sidelines. But... Same thing with HBAR Foundation, same thing with a lot of these others. At the start, and you might say, oh, but it's old. But at the start of these newer phases with, for example, smart contracts and whatnot, you might have to fund things because as partially true what the SEC said, things are kind of difficult to get going, um, but certainly possible and certainly already happening and have been happening for a very long time. And I should also add here, because I sometimes forget about this, but people keep asking in the comment section, what's next? When's the next lawsuit date? Dusty, what's coming up for the lawsuit? When another call? When this, when that? Next most important date for the lawsuit by far is going to be September 13th. Put this in your agendas because this is when the next phase of the lawsuit is going to start. It's the motions for summary judgment. It's by far the most, the most important part of this lawsuit and it's coming within two weeks. So get excited for that. Get frisky. Get freaking... Because yeah, it's about to be a very exciting time. And of course, I'm going to showcase to you guys whenever something new comes out. Something else that I couldn't place in any other video that I thought I should quickly share here. Here's why the U.S. launched probe against CEO of crypto exchange Binance. Just wanted to quickly say this is not about your funds. Your funds are still quote unquote safe. Uh, this is just about anti-money laundering and these bank secrecy laws and whatnot. And as an exchange, you need to get these investigations quite thoroughly and quite often. I don't think this is a quote unquote bad thing. If these entities are looking into Binance, for example, asking, hey, what happened there? What happened there? It's a good thing, you know, because I'm, I'm looking from the other side as well. If I just got my money stolen or if I, if I have some trouble with money laundering that's affecting me in a negative way, for example, even though, what are the chances? But all right. Yeah. Or, or, or from an entity to just protect your laws and, and to fight money laundering. Certainly, you know, you have to investigate, make sure they're doing things following the book. So I can't really be sad or, or angered by investigations like this. I think it's just more than right for them to do so. Then again, it's all fine. They're doing a good job. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so yeah. Again, guys, I'm going to say it once more. Crypto space, it's in a crazy situation right now. But make sure you check out my giveaway. A link is down below. And 
Over on Bybit, there's two things. One is a free $1,000 airdrop. Make sure you go ahead and check it out. It's a $1,000 position that you can get if you did not have an account yet. I think just read for yourself here, everything. Um, if you want the exact link to this page, check out my Twitter. Um, it's it's going to be on there. Or just type, press the link down below for Bybit and then just go and look on the page. You'll find it eventually. And also check out the Bybit Launchpad because there's another coin launching, Oxa. I'm going to be buying into it. Not sure how good it's going to go, but I buy into every single coin that launches on there because the probability of doing good is pretty high. But yeah, that's it. Adios, amigos. See you guys later in another one.